Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will talk about delegates and Kotlin on the one hand because I realized I don't have a video about that yet. On the other hand because one of my shorts inspired me to do that which was about not using base activities. I recently posted a short where I said hey, base activities are an anti-pattern in Android. Don't do that and that was a very controversial one. So the main argument why people said they sometimes have to use base activities was that you yeah you some sometimes need to override specific behavior for all of your activities or just for some of your activities and then you kind of need that inheritance there however in this video i want to show you an alternative to actually using inheritance which is well delegation but let's first of all talk about the problems that actually come with using inheritance um, I don't say never use inheritance, but I say use it with care. So on the one hand, if you use inheritance and for example use something like a base activity, then you don't really have a clear responsibility because base activity tells you nothing about what's actually inside of that class. Okay, if you actually want to follow that single responsibility principle and you create a parent activity that only has one responsibility, let's say you have a parent activity that uses some kind of activity logger. So let's say you want to log when the user actually leaves the screen and you want to log when the user gets back to the screen. So you basically just have some kind of analytics logger that logs in um, on pause and in on start. Then you might think you could make that an analytics activity that all of your activities actually inherit from. And in that analytics activity, you actually just implement that analytics logging process in on start or on resume whatever and on pause. That works of course, but what happens if you actually need to share more behavior between some or all of your activities? Let's say you want to be able to open all or some of your activities with a specific intent that comes from uh, comes with some kind of data. Let's say the user might open your app using some kind of link in the um, Android browser. And for that, you of course need to override the on new intent function in your activity. So you again could think about you make that some kind of deep link activity or so that all of your activities inherit from. But now you actually have two parent activities with on the one hand the logging behavior and on the other hand the deep link behavior and you want all of your activities to actually have both these behaviors. But since in Kotlin we can only inherit from a single class that doesn't work. So we what most people would end up doing is putting both these behaviors into one single base activity and then they again violate the single responsibility principle. So let's talk about the solution of how we can achieve this while still following our clean code principles and still being able to share behavior between different classes. Like it doesn't need to be an activity of course, that's just an example that I um, commonly see people use this for. And that solution is called delegation or using delegates. So uh, delegation is in the end just a normal design pattern you can use in any language and implement in any language. However, Kotlin supports this natively out of the box by actually giving us a cool keyword which is called by. I'm sure you've seen this before, maybe if you um, use something by lazy or by view models, then you've effectively used delegates already in your code without maybe knowing that. So let's just see how we could now give all of our activities the behavior of this analytics logger I talked about and just kind of simulate that logger by just logging some print line statements in on start and on uh, pause in all of our activities or in a way that we can easily include this behavior in all of our activities at least by simply using something like uh, called a delegate. And first of all, you want to define an interface for that, which we might call an analytics logger. And that wherever we want this analytics logger to actually log something, so in our activities, we need to provide the information or the, the kind of instances to this logger that it actually needs. And in our case, that is simply the lifecycle owner because it needs to know when the activity is actually in the on start and on pause state. So what we can do is we can write a function register lifecycle owner, for example. We have a lifecycle owner here. And now we actually write a concrete implementation of that interface. So what we'll do is we will write something like a class analytics logger implementation, which will implement this um, analytics logger interface. We will need to implement the function here, register lifecycle owner. And in here, we can simply kind of register a new callback for the lifecycle owner. So we actually get 
information about the lifecycle state. How do we do this? Well, for that we actually need another interface, which is called um, a lifecycle event observer. Then we need to implement another function, which we do here, which is called on state changed and yeah, that's basically called for any lifecycle event which we get here and then we can check is that currently on start, on stop, whatever. What we can now do is uh, in a register lifecycle owner is we can say owner dot lifecycle dot add observer. The observer is simply this since we implement this interface and now we just kind of linked our activities lifecycle so we later just pass our activity for this um, as this parameter for this function. We linked the lifecycle of that to the observer that we implemented here. So now we can effectively listen to lifecycle events of our activity here in our analytics logger implementation. So we don't do this in our main activity directly anymore by doing something like overriding on pause, overriding on start and so on, which would need to be done in all of our activities that actually need this behavior with the analytics logging. No. Instead, we just do this now once in our analytics logger implementation here. So we can check when the event um, is actually a lifecycle dot event dot on start. Then we say um, user opened the screen. We should actually do on resume, right? Because let's say the user minimizes the app and goes back, then on resume is called. So user opened the screen. We duplicate this and we do the same for on pause. So when the user leaves the screen, so user leaves the screen. And you can imagine that this is just some kind of analytics logger instance that performs maybe some kind of network calls or so when the state is in uh, those specific states. <laughs> and we want this in all of our activities. So else we don't do anything. So how do we now take this behavior here that we defined once and put it in our activity, in our main activity, so that we actually give our main activity that behavior. We do this simply by going here to our um, inheritance and interface implementations, and we will add an analytics logger. And we now use this by keyword that I mentioned. So we say by analytics logger implementation. So we basically take the life cycle of our activity which we will pass to this register function. So we can now say um, register lifecycle owner and we pass this. We basically take this lifecycle and we delegate the work. So what we do with this lifecycle that we add an observer, we delegate this to our analytics logger implementation. So that in our case is called the delegates. And if we actually now launch this app, um, I have an emulator open here on another screen. Uh, you don't need to see this. All we need to do is we need to go to our logs um, let's search for user. Yeah, you can see user opened the screen. The logs are actually firing since we are in the, or we at least were in the on resume state. And if I now actually minimize the app, you will see user leaves the screen. If I go back to the app, then user opened the screen. So that's working perfectly fine. And we are now able to actually give a specific activity, that specific behavior of this analytics logging process without actually using inheritance. So all we need to do is we need to add this to our activity, which is pretty much the same as just inheriting from some kind of parent activity. And we need to call one line of code to actually register our lifecycle owner. And since we can implement as many interfaces as we like in a specific class, that now has no limit of us actually giving um, many activities the same type of behavior. And the same way as I talked about with the deep links, you could have some kind of interface, maybe deep link handler. You have a function handle deep link where you pass the intent. Uh, intent, come on, intent like this. You write an implementation for that deep link handler. implementation which will implement this and in here you can simply implement the behavior for that so here you would simply have your custom logic to parse that intent and do something with it and then in your activity you can actually go here and you include that in your um, implementation block here so you can say deep link handler by deep link handler implementation and in your activity, when you actually receive a new intent in on new intent, then you would simply call 
handle deep link and you pass that intent. So again, you just need to add that single line of code to your activities to actually um, allow them to handle deep links and the logic will be in this object so you still follow the single responsibility principle here. And of course, if you are instead of this deep link handler and you actually need a reference to the activity, you could also simply do this by adding another function here or you could say handle deep link and you also pass the activity like a component activity, for example, oops, and then the intent. And you also put this stuff in here. And in here, you would then simply need to pass this activity here as well. And you could then simply save this here in a local variable um, in this deep link handler, and you would be able to actually have a reference to this specific activity. So you could also use this to perform some kind of other actions where you need this reference for. Okay, cool. So far for normal delegates, there's actually one more type of delegates I want to show you just for uh, making this a complete tutorial about delegates. And those are so-called property delegates. I have mentioned that you've maybe already used the lazy function. So what we can do is we can say private val um, object by oh, object is a bad name <laughs> object by lazy, for example. And in here you can initialize some kind of code. No Siri, not now we could write print line hello world and then you would return some kind of object i'll just return an integer here and what lazy will do is it will only initialize this object here so in this case the simple integer which wouldn't make much sense but if it's a complex object like a retrofit instance for example it would only initialize that the first time we actually access this object so not right away so this print line statement would be called when we first of all um, do something with that object. So if we want to print this, as soon as we access this here for this print line statement, we would simply fire this block and actually create this instance. And since object is now a property, an integer, that of course needs to also work since here we have these classes actually, but we also have these property delegates, which essentially just um, kind of provide a way to um, override the setter and getter for a specific object and then easily being able to share this behavior for setters and getters. Um, sounds complex, let's just write our own implementation of, my, uh, of, of lazy, which I will call my lazy, so you understand how this works. Um, let me maybe, yeah, get rid of this. Let's just get rid of all this. I think you've um, understood this and if not, I will put the code in GitHub. Um, yeah, like this and like this. So if we now want our own implementation of lazy, let's have a class my lazy. And essentially what we want to be able to do is we want to create any type of object. So we can say this object is out of any, so we can pass any type there uh, that uh, inherits from any. And since anything inherits from any, we can pass anything there. And here in the constructor, we would provide a lambda function initialize, which would then simply return our type t here. So if we actually wrap this block around an integer like we do here, then t would be an integer, else it would be a string or whatever you actually return in that initialize block. And what we can now do is we can override the operator function get value, which is called whenever we access the specific value here that we talk about. So uh, in our case, it would be here this uh, three. And that needs this reference, which yeah, just contains a reference to this object. And it needs a property that's just the, the function signature that we need to provide if we actually want to override this operator function here which would be a K property like this. We don't need this here uh, in this function, but we just need to provide these parameters so we can properly override this operator function. However, it would return our type T again, so our integer. And in here, what we can do is we can actually have a variable private var value, which is the value that we actually want to save in this lazy object once it's been initialized. So that's of type T null initially, since initially we don't have a value until we didn't initialize anything. And here what we can do is we can simply now return if value is null, that means we've never initialized that, then we want to initialize it and assign the result to our value, to our local value property here. So what, what we can do is we can say value 
is equal to our initialize block, initialize, which will return the value onto initialize and then return the value here. In that case, it will be non-null since our initialize block can only return non-nullable values. So we can um, safely assume it's not null here. And else we want to also return our value assuming it's not null because if the value is not null then well we can just return the value and we don't need to initialize it again so we effectively created our very own version of a super simple um, lazy delegate of course the real uh, lazy function is a lot more complex needs to uh, take care of things like uh, making this synchronous and stuff like that we just have a super simple way of doing this here and we can effectively now replace this by using our mylazy. And here we can say print line hello world and actually we turn our three and if we take a look here that's now an integer. If we don't print this and actually relaunch the app taking a look in Larkat, search for hello world you'll see actually hello world with a lower w um, then there won't be any print line statements because this block of code will only fire when we access this object for the first time. But if we actually add a print line statement here or do anything with this object um, like this, then we access the object here and therefore the getter of that to get the value of it. So this block will fire off. We initialize it, setting it to three and also firing this print line statement. So then we should see this print line statement. If we relaunch this, then you can see now we actually see hello world because we access this object the first time. If we now access it again, then this getter will of course fire again. But since the value is not equal to null in that case, we will simply return what we have initialized before. So again, this is a super simplified form of implementing something like a, a lazy delegate here. Please always use the official delegate. That's just for demonstration of how these property delegates actually work in Kotlin. So I would recommend if you can easily replace your parent classes with something like a delegate, then I would always recommend to do that since it just gets rid of that coupling between your class and the parent class and you can just um, share more different behaviors while still following the single responsibility principle. If you enjoyed watching this video, then I would be very happy if you could hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more Android and Kotlin videos and maybe we can also reach the 100,000 subscribers at the end of this year, which would be amazing. Also, if you want to see something specific on my channel in future, then I'm always happy about reading some of your ideas. So feel free to put that in the comments. Apart from that, I wish you a brilliant rest of the week and see you back in the next video. Bye bye.